near-death experience is very similar. Whenever you're in a near-death state, your spirit body and your soul leaves your material body. So now you're in the spirit world, able to do things. For example, look down on your own body, which is why most people have that experience. You can also connect with spirits in all sorts of different places and often do. And because you're in a near-death state, you often have a memory of it when you return because it's not a sleep state. Right. So you don't have the same fears. You have a different set of fears generally in the near-death state. Um, but you don't have the same fears as you would in the sleep state remembering. So you often remember them. And that's why lots of people remember near-death experiences, which are all real spirit events mixed with a little bit of lack of you know oxygen in the brain and a few other things that are occurring physiology which may which may mix mix up the entire experience so the light at the end of the tunnel is, is real is true yeah that, that, that story is real. yeah the reason why it's a tunnel is there's what you would now you know the term you use now is wormholes right from a scientific scientific point of view there's, there's an interstellar boundary between this dimension and the first sphere dimension. And as you're travelling through that dimension, it's like a tunnel with a light at the end of it. Does that make sense? And that's how you will experience in the future much of your travel in the spirit world. And, and, and people, people are waiting for you at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Yeah. Waiting for you to disconnect from your body and you actually make that journey. But Frank Packer didn't see the tunnel. Some oh, sorry, not Frank, Kerry. Kerry Packer. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people won't see a tunnel. Some some actually have heard of Howard Storm. He actually went into a state where there were lots of evil spirits around him who 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 tortured him, actually, due to his soul condition. It's worth reading that book too. But none of this is to frighten you. This is all just to tell you that these are just people, right? This is all not to frighten you. Right. Hey Jay, I, my experience was that I actually went into the love. Could you explain what that might be about? Yeah, even in the first sphere, um, what happens is there's a place in res of reception that we all go to generally when we pass, particularly if we've not got a consciousness of the spirit world. What happens is, in the spirit world... Did you see Peter there with, with the gates? <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't want that job. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> No, that was a quote from him, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, he doesn't like standing in one place very much. But never has, actually. Anyway, let's say you pass, you're, you're in the process of this near-death, which is really a passing sort of process. This is an experience that is very similar to a passing experience. The first sphere, there's a place of reception at the top of the first sphere, which is very bright, much brighter than the air. From a, from a light perspective. And it also is full of love because there's lots of coming and going there and there's lots of spirits of a very high quality there waiting for people who pass. Right? And what they're waiting for people who pass and what they do is they nurture them in that state until they're ready to face their own emotional condition. Alright? So you will actually see that as a as bright light, but also a feeling of euphoric love, which is actually coming from these spirits, right, to help you through the process of potentially passing. And, and so that's why many people describe this euphoria, which causes them to no longer have fear about death. And, and in fact, you have nothing to fear about death, because all of you will be welcomed by somebody in the spirit world. Now, whether you accept that welcome or not, for many of the spirits who are here still with us, many of them never accepted that welcome. They were so churned up with their own emotions and so churned up in their own fears that they wouldn't allow themselves to see anything. And what they need to do now is allow themselves to see the spirits that surround them wanting to help them. And you can do that just by desiring it in your heart and then you'll feel it. Does that make sense? Mm really quite simple. Again, the, the problem with a lot of these untruths is they're so complicated, but the truth is so simple that if anybody understood it, they'd progress so rapidly that there'd be hardly any negative experiences with death, there'd be hardly any fear of death and life at all. And how much of our fear of death causes other choices for us on earth that we wouldn't normally make if we didn't, weren't afraid. So it's, a, so it's a problem that 
just can pay us. Excuse me, Andre. Have I answered this question? Yes. 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 I was going to say, when people are in the hospital and they're dying, yep. they often go in and out of consciousness. Yep. They're, they're likely to say the relatives around them, but relatives of the past are waiting. They can see them in the room. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? What happens is, uh, in the, when a person is passing or in a hospital, usually there are lots of spirits around them in the hospital room with them. And they're all waiting for them to go through this process. Some of them feel they're going to pass or they might just help them to stay. There might be other emotions going on that cause the attraction. But yes, there are often lots of people uh, surrounding that individual waiting for them to pass. And even a person on earth who doesn't have any friends and no family often has lots of spirits around them at the time of passing. 